it's all like Silicon Valley venture capital guys who went who go into the middle of the desert, just some of the worst parasitic filth who who go there specifically to just like LARP and do a bunch of drugs. What is this? You couldn't pay me to go to Burning Man? What is it? Let's see. Like, uh. yeah. What's the plot? If you don't hear from me this week, it's because I'm on the playa. What's the playa, you ask? It's my spiritual home, an elitist and pretentious failed social experiment where us techies and trust fund kids candy flip in orgy tents and eat bluefin tuna that's helicoptered in daily. Us burners abide by the 10 principles, which doesn't sound culty at all. In fact, our radical inclusion principle is so radical that it's basically fucking impossible to get tickets unless you're insta-famous or grandfathered in by your sugar daddy. And our decommodification principle is essentially code for wellness influencer brand strategy. Now that my crypto empire has crumbled, it's time for me to turn my full attention towards hedonism and radical self-expression, which I'll definitely be blowing up your timeline with for the next three weeks. And the word around camp is that Diplo is going to be leading a satanic ritual inside of a giant yoni egg installation. I can't wait for you to see more photos of me and people that I barely know wearing tons of fur and bonding under the influence of 2CB. Well, anyways, it's time for me to go. F you said, man, fuck Diplo. He probably already has, man. If you go to if you go to Burning Man, you probably fucked it, blow. You probably fucked him. You probably sucked him. You don't even know it, but it happened. Okay, it is the most I had sex with Diplo unintentionally ass event of all time. Okay, straight up, you're not a real burner until your fucking piss is burning because Diplo fucked you and sucked you. Okay, <laughs> real burners, <laughs> real burners have their pee burning for a week. Further explore the K hole. I'll see the rest of you untouchables back in the default world next week. Anyway. How many costs to suck till you get the Diplo? You already have. Burning Man is Hodge for white women with dreads. Oh, yeah, that's a tweet. I've, I've seen that one before. Here's the thing, okay? Here, here's the problem. Here's the problem with this kind of stuff. First of all, obviously... I am going to be anti-Burning Man because it's one of the radical principles of self-reliance at Burning Man is just never taking a shower. Okay? And I, I hate that anarchist communist shit to begin with. Okay? If you've been in this community for long enough, you know I immediately... My, my smell test immediately goes out of control. Okay? It's out of control. As soon as I as soon as I see a situation like that, and I don't even do that many drugs, you know what I mean? It's just like I'm not I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. Okay? Because it violates Bloom once ate someone's butt on stage at Burning Man. Yeah, his girlfriend's, who actually I'm a Instagram moot with, I remember at the time, because she posted about it. Isn't Coachella just as douchey? Yes. Coachella is just as douchey. The only difference between Burning Man and Coachella is that Coachella is like very much an event organized for douchebags, myself included. But it doesn't like Coachella is never sold as like this holistic, spiritual, life changing experience. It's just like McDonald's music in the desert. You know what I mean? Sponsored out the fucking wazoo. It's just a music festival, just like every other fucking music festival. It's just not super specific to like electronic dance music, like uh, the Daisy Carnival or whatever the fuck it is, or Ultra Winter Music Conference. That's the only difference is like Coachella is very like Coachella is very much uh, a music festival they put out and and everybody understands that it's like Arch Arch muscles in this and Coachella is a music festival for top of the artists. Exactly. Whereas, whereas Burning Man, on the other hand, is like a spiritual experience uh, where you get to do ayahuasca next to Elizabeth Holmes. You know what I mean? That kind of shit. So I'm actually wearing a newly top that's a little bit different than my normal newly. And today I am actually at the TFD office because there is all kinds of construction going on in my home or renovation rather. And yes, I will be doing a video about that later. 
it has taken me on a journey. I have been to the desert. I have seen the rain and it is getting your kitchen redone. Um, I have a lot to say financially. There you go. Perfect, perfect depiction of Burning Man. Elizabeth Holmes with the Burning Man torched an effigy for Theranos, then spent six months living in an RV while prosecutors built a case against her for fraudulent business practices. Actually, and otherwise about that topic, I'll do it later. But suffice to say for now, we're in the old office, which luckily is just a short little bike ride away from my home. And today we're gonna to be talking about something you maybe didn't expect to hear me talk about on this channel, which is Burning Man. Now, I have to just share a really fun fact about me that you may never have been able to guess from knowing me through this channel, which is that I know multiple couples who've been married at Burning Man. It's the worst fact about me. I ah! don't like it any more than you do. It constantly makes me question every choice I've made in this life. But I have seen multiple couples in all of their culturally appropriative garb, standing in that desert, doing a hand fasting on Molly. Yeah, and actually one of them's already separated, so goes to show. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Burning Man is like, although I'm definitely, I used to go to some festivals. I wasn't a festival girly, but I did go to some festivals, mostly jam bands, because I was dating a guy that liked jam bands, the things we do for love. Um, Wasn't Ryan Grimm married there? I heard he went for his, his, uh, fuck. Uh, for honeymoon? But I was never a Burning Man girly, but it has been very peripherally present in my life. And actually an even funner fact is that the litter that we adopted Mona from, the people that we adopted her from, they gave the... Okay, okay, but we're before clear. we dive into the nuances okay. of Burning Man, especially as it pertains to the... I like this channel, but I want to hear, I want to get to the meat of it. ...logical impact. Let's talk first about what is Burning Man, for those of you lucky enough to not know. To explain it simply, Burning Man is a temporary city that pops up every year at Black Rock City, an unincorporated spot in the desert of northwestern Nevada, and about 80,000 people are usually expected to attend. And here is a deeper, if somewhat pretentious, explanation from an Insider article. Coachella is a festival. Ultra is a festival. Tomorrowland is a festival. Burning Man is a full-on event. Yeah. More specifically, it's a temporary metropolis. Yeah, how are you going to fucking sit here and tell me that this is like the same as Coachella? Coachella is pretentious. Everybody knows it's pretentious. Coachella doesn't hide that it's pretentious. It's like the top of the hour ad break. Everybody knows it's coming, okay? Same with Ultra. It's for fucking douchebags, okay? Same with EDC, sure. But Burning Man, on the other hand, is like it's an event. Unlike the top of the hour ad break that everybody knows is coming and can actually do radical self-reliance against and subscribe for five dollars or for free. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Asan, you definitely used to be an ultra guy. No, I I mean I've been to ultra. I've never been a festival guy, chat. You you're not like I've been to a fuck ton of festivals, but I've never been a festival guy. I don't like it. Dedicated to community, art, self-expression, and self-reliance, according to the Burning Man organization's website which is a little long-winded, so you can see why some people resort to simply saying festival. But the term festival implies that this is a show Koe Noroto version, they give the tank of the subs. ...put on by one group to be enjoyed by another, and this is not the case. At The Burn, as it's oftentimes called, everyone is expected to participate. Participation is one of the ten principles of Burning Man, a set of guidelines created by co-founder Larry Harvey that reflects the heart of the event. Whether it's by volunteer... I'm sorry, I ain't going to nothing that's got that, that's run by a dude with that hat. Guidelines created by co-founder... Okay, are you joking, man? You see that hat and you're like, oh, fuck no. Get the fuck out of here. I'll be radically seeing myself not at this event, okay? Larry Harvey that reflects the heart of the event. Whether it's by volunteering at a theme camp, making some kind of art, sharing a gift, tangible or not. Bur Point is, it's very pretentious. It's just like incredibly fucking fart sm uh, smelly. Burning Man suggests many ways that people can take part. And re the COVID of it all, there was an unofficial Burning Man in 2020 and 2021, but this was the first year the event was officially back since 2019. Now, if you look at some of the post Burning Man TikTok, and it's all post because there actually is no internet connection at the event itself, which is probably for the best. You will admittedly see some pretty cool structures and art cars, but a huge focus of what you'll find on- uh, Wait, I- You see I, some pretty cool structures. Like my friend did one of these installations. A friend of mine who I had to, I had to go to Art Basel in Miami for, uh, to do like a piece on it for the Young Turks talking about like uh, art theft or not art theft, sorry. Um, how art is a vehicle for tax evasion. And I didn't have a lot of money back then, so I had to stay at my friend's warehouse, a college friend of mine, who, you're saying Omega Low Art Basel, but like the reason why I went was, you know, to do work, okay? And when I went there and did work there, 
uh, I was literally, I, I had to fucking, I had to fucking sleep in a goddamn warehouse where these dudes were all awake the entire time because they were like, one, making one monument for Art Basel specifically, and, and that the Art Basel monument they were taking, I think they were going to take the Burning Man afterwards, or they had taken the Burning Man. I don't know what the timeline looks like. And and it was some of the worst experiences of my life. I had to sleep on a fucking, like, I had to sleep on a cot where people were doing drugs 24 fucking 7. I had to, like, put headphones in to, like, hope that I could sleep with, like, uh, you know, an, a, an eye mask and shit like that. It was awful. I had to fucking woman are my favorite guy. Anyway. Um, what? Oh, I'm going to do a little bit of 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 a Oh yeah, there's like cool shit like this as well, for sure, okay? Uh, admittedly. A huge focus of what you'll find on any of those hashtags is going to be around the partying aspect, which is not unlike most festivals. You're also theoretically supposed to ask people permission to film them at Burning Man, which is clearly not happening on most of these TikToks. Let's just take a brief tour through this land. There is also, as I mentioned, a healthy dose of cultural appropriation, as one commenter aptly put it, <sighs> a bunch of rich white kids cosplaying poverty. Now, here's the thing. I oh, that's what they mean. I thought they were going to say, like, they're wearing fucking indigenous garb or something. I was like, yeah, of course they are. It's the most, like, that is probably the most expected, least offensive aspect of the appropriation. You know what I mean? I myself, knowing a fair amount of Burning Man people, know that not all of them are ultra wealthy, although many of them are. And one of the ones that got married is the son of, like, literally the ninth richest man in Europe. So you do the math. And some people, as with other festivals, do scrimp and save and tighten their budget in basically every other area of their life to dedicate most of their financial flexibility to attending Burning Man, which is totally their choice. It's no different from someone who saves up a lot of money for other lavish travel or really expensive clothing or whatever happens to be their personal outlet. But it should be noted that for those who would want to consider Burning Man some kind of an inclusive event from an economic standpoint, we should probably discuss how much it actually costs to attend. In 1992, the first year Burning Man was a ticketed event, tickets were $25. Using an inflation calculator, that would be a little more than $50 in 2022 money. Like, this absolutely makes a little bit more sense when you think about it, right? Like, that is like, it's in the middle of the fucking desert. You're not, like, actually doing anything, you know what I mean? You're, you're like, there's art installations they build in the desert, they take it down, it's whatever, okay? Maybe in its inception, it was uh, intended to be something entirely different. Whereas, whereas now, it's like, I mean, come on. You, you, you get a fucking lot for like 600, 700 bucks or 7,000 if you have an RV. And it, they haven't really like done anything different. Uh, it's still the fucking desert. Uh, also, here it is. I just walked five miles in the mud out of Burning Man with Chris Rock and a fan picked this up. <laughs> There you go. That's Burning Man for you. If you want to understand Burning Man, that's another great example of what it's but like. But tickets this year rose to $575 per attendee, which is over a 2,000% increase from the original. Yeah, it's still desert. It's not like they fucking built something there. They didn't build like an oasis. It's still fucking desert. I mean, Matt, update. We got three quarters of an inch of rain. Travel is impossible. And there's about 70,000 people stranded on a barren lake bed. But fortunately, burners are badass and brought all the supplies we need or most of us we got people who came by bus camped on the edge of the city they're in pop-up tents and at risk of getting hypothermia but we don't need outside help we're gonna bind together get radically self-reliant dry out the furniture and keep the party going the alternative is to fall into despair roll over and die and we all have a choice in how we're gonna handle this so everyone open up your starlink satellites so people can communicate with their families make an expedition to the edge of the city with food and water and don't fight anybody because we're all in this together bury those negative thoughts and gratitude for your life because a couple like this guy's probably not like a fucking super wealthy guy and i still dislike him you know what i mean like do you see what i'm saying chatters who are like uh excuse me like not everyone is rich yeah this guy isn't and he's still fucking annoying so guess what dude 
My opinion hasn't changed. Also, what is that flag? What's going on there? I was trying to I was trying to get a peek of that bad boy, but I can't see it from the video. They're in pop. Yeah. Self-reliant, dry out the furniture, and keep the party going. The alternative is to fall into despair, roll over, and die. And we all have a choice in how we're going to handle this. So everyone open up your Starlink satellites so people can communicate with their families. Make an expedition to the edge of the city with food and water. And don't fight anybody because we're all in this together. Bury those negative thoughts and gratitude for your life because a couple people didn't make it last night. And know that we're all going to clean up this mess and get out of here. A couple people didn't make it last Wait, people died already? What the fuck? <laughs> what? Wait, did he just drop that? Reminded that there's no reason to conserve resources quickly at Burning Man. Feel free to drink all of that water very quickly. Out of here. This is the hand we were dealt this year, and together we're going to get through it. Drowning mad. My father's a plumber. The owners of a similar festival here in South Africa called Africa Burn asked my father to do work for free for the festival. The festival is not cheap to join. He had no idea they wanted free work until he went to meet them. Yeah, radical self reliance. Barter system. I mean, I can't get over this guy. I'm seeing this guy. No, this guy no. is. This guy is lasered into my mind. The alternative is to fall into despair, roll over, and die. And we all have a choice in how we're going to handle this. So okay, I'm sorry. This is like a bunch of like middle class and upper middle class and incredibly wealthy people getting together to fucking LARP like they're at Skid Row, okay? 1992 cost. And that's just the ticket price. But like not even because the reality is it's not even like LARPing at Skid Row because they also have like they bring in a fuck ton of amenities. When you account for food, airfare, vehicle passes, car rentals, desert and first aid supplies, tents, camping equipment, etc., you could be looking at thousands of dollars just to spend nine days in the desert. And that's not even touching the drug budget, which, let's be honest, is uh, up there. So who is actually attending, on average? According to Black Rock City census data from 2018, 59% of burners identify as male. Burners were also overwhelmingly white and at least upper middle class. In 2016, 79.1% of burners were white, while 58.4% of the U.S. population was. 74.4% of burners were college graduates, compared to just 29.3% of the country. And the median household income for burners was $94,200 versus $65,000 for the U.S. The event has had a low participation. Wait, I'm sorry, what? thousand two hundred dollars versus sixty five thousand for the u.s As median the event has had a low participation rate for black festival goers with a figure that increased to only 1.1 1 .1 in 2019 okay this is because of the thing that i mentioned all the fucking time okay if you're black you already have like built-in adversity in your life okay you're black you're fucking black there's already systemic racism shit like that so there's no reason to be like oh yeah let me make my life harder. This is 100%. This is 100% activities of people that don't have adversity where they're like, oh, let me just like fucking experience this for a week. That's it. That's why the only black dude there is Chris Rock, it seems. <laughs> Mexicans don't bother with this. Yeah, because, <laughs> dude, dude, listen, listen. There, there's no, there, there is no reason to do this if your life is already uh, the hard, okay? If you're working every day especially if you're like especially if you are uh one of the fucking agricultural workers like imagine going not that every mexican is doing that obviously not what i'm saying but like imagine one of the fucking agricultural workers that are doing burning man every fucking day of their lives when they're burning up in the goddamn fields pulling out your <laughs> pulling out your fucking uh vegetables that's why there are so many whites who make their personality doing hard things like tough mutter etc their race was too easy so they got to do some hard ones yeah 2019. And when asked about the lack of diversity present at Burning Man, founder Larry Harvey infamously said, I don't think black folks like to camp as much as white folks. Yikes. He went on to say that I think it's a little too much to expect of the organization to solve the problems of racial parity. We do see a fast increasing influx of Asians, black folks. I actually see black folks out here, unlike some of our liberal critics. Sometimes you hear people in business giving also, for the record, I don't give a fuck. Like, I, I'm not one of those people that's like, we got to get more black people to brave the elements of Burning Man. That's not what I'm saying. I think that's not what she's saying either. I think she's just showing that to show you, like, what the event looks like, what the demographics of the attendees look like. Okay? You just made a fan of me a song, real shit. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> like, there is no... We need more black people to also die at Burning Man. <laughs> In quotes, and you can just hear their publicist dying inside the more the sentence keeps going on. For perhaps the best example of that, I recommend you take a look at this video of Lars von Trier at a, a press conference for Melancholia, where he goes on like a three minute 
uh, rant about how he's actually a Nazi by heritage, uh, but how he empathizes with Hitler. And poor Kristen Dunst is sitting next to him and just the light is draining from her eyes and you can see her be like, I'm never getting an Oscar for this movie. That has the same energy as this quote. Anyway. And yet despite this, radical inclusion is listed as one of Burning Man's core principles. As they put it, anyone may be a part of Burning Man. We welcome and respect the stranger. I love this because you know what it is? I love this because this is exactly like Elon Musk saying, you know, free speech. That's why he bought Twitter, right? Yeah, radical inclusion. As long as you can pay for it, as long as you have the literal material possessions to be able to, like, live in the fucking desert for eight, nine days, okay? Which is like saying uh, uh, free speech, as long as you give me $8 a month. You know what I mean? <laughs> no prerequisites exist for participation in our community. If they practice what they preach, we might expect more outreach from the organization toward people of different identities. Because one would imagine it's pretty easy to be inclusive when most of the people you're surrounded by are part of your in-group, both in terms of things like race, but also in terms of things like being other upper middle class people. Listen, everyone's welcome. You just have to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars just to get here. And then the rest of those costs are on you to burden as well. I'm surprised Burning Man doesn't have a credit card yet. That's probably their next step as a Burning Man branded credit card. As one article in the Sacramento Bee put it, despite being a festival supposedly founded on the premise of radical inclusion and in light of a reputation for whiteness so widespread it became a cultural motif, 2020 was the first year that the festival organization spoke out about race issues. There have been a number of listening and learning procedures pushed forward by BIPOC burners and undertaken by organizational leadership, including sensitivity training, a review of policies, and the reshaping of accessibility needs. However, many feel that it is too little too late, calling the change a perfunctory set of steps that had to be cajoled out of leadership by BIPOC. Bro, this is the weirdest. Okay, this is like, I guess it's funny because of like the actions that they took, but it's still probably the weirdest angle to tackle this thing. You know what I mean? Like black people not going to Burning Man is a good thing for the black people. Okay. It's just like, like it's fine. You know what I mean? It's good. You know what I mean? It, it, it's not, <laughs> you don't got to get those numbers up. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're being, we're fine being left out of this, my guy. They're like, no, 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 you don't understand. We have to get black people here. They also must suffer, okay? Oh, my God, imagine Elizabeth Holmes doing land acknowledgement at Burning Man. No, the more I, like, talk about stuff like this, the more I'm, like, I'm talking to Brace right now. I, I kind of want to go. Like, you're just trying to trick us into building your own shit for, building shit for them again. You won't let me. attendees. Now, some of you may be aware of like festival types. And to be fair, there are strains. I mean, listen, there are juggalos. There are people who are at the jam band festivals that I was at. There are deadheads. There are like the EDM bros. There's like festival people come in all stripes. But if you're talking about a specific kind of festival person who fancies themselves quite you know, progressive and thoughtful and open. There's no way you can stream that shit. No, no, no. I would, I would go to document it. There are other methods of documenting called journaling, for example, writing, filming, as a matter of fact. Minded and, you know, all of those things. Literally, probably the hardest people in the world to convince that they have any kind of blind spot. Um, so just true, true hats off to whoever was sitting in a room with those people covered in glitter and Native American regalia um, to try and get them to listen to the fact that only 1% of people at this festival are black. Good luck, guys. And similarly, even if we are now, quote, listening and learning, there is also the massive entitlement demonstrated by attendees. There's supposed to be a, quote, leave no trace policy, but citizens of nearby cities like Reno have complained about the trash left behind after Burning Man for years. A local sheriff has said, Burning Man brings nothing to Pershing County except for heartache. And one Guardian article wrote that the festival expects visitors to clean up after themselves, but that has posed challenges. In 2018, the U.S. Bureau of Land Management told organizers that they had left too much trash after that year's event, and business owners from Utah to California have complained about waste left by festival attendees. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, upper middle class to upper class white people who love mind altering drugs, who think very highly of their own worldview, and who have the ability to take off a fair amount of time from work to go vibe in the desert, and you're like, man, that sounds like an episode of Silicon Valley, you would be right. Because Black Rock City at this point may as well be a Google campus.
According to a New York Times article from 2014, over the last two years, Burning Man, which this year runs from August 25th to September 1st, has been the annual getaway for a new crop of millionaire and billionaire technology moguls, many of whom are one-upping one another in a secret game of I can spend more money than you and, some say, ruining it for everyone else. We're supposed to be upper middle class here, not upper upper class. An attendee who went with a group of quote tech elites that same year said his camp includes about 100 people from the valley. This is why I fucking hate it. This is exactly what I know of Burning Man. This is exactly what I've heard of people that have flown out, been flown out to Burning Man. It's all shit like this, okay? It's all like Silicon Valley, venture capital guys who went, who go into the middle of the fucking desert, just some of the worst parasitic filth, okay? Who, who go there specifically to just like LARP and do a bunch of fucking drugs, okay? They're a very small percentage of the camps. Man, you make it seem like the rest of the fucking camps is, okay, I'm going to lose my mind. Two things. One, whenever people say Coachella is better, of course it's not better. Coachella is also dog shit. Why the fuck do people always say, oh, what about Coachella? Everybody knows Coachella sucks. Everyone, including people who have attended, like myself, who have been paid to attend, as a matter of fact. That's number one. Number two, the small percentage of camps. It's not like the rest of the fucking camps are done by, like, honest to God, broke people, because it's a self-selecting audience. Similar to January 6th. If you recall, a lot of people were like, these are real working class individuals at January 6th. How dare you shit on the Masson? Is something that a lot of people have told me during January 6th. What did I tell you back then? I told you, motherfuckers who can attend a rally in D.C., take the day off, take, uh, you know, and have enough disposable income to be able to fly out to D.C. from all around the country and get in a fucking hotel at D.C. specifically to go do a riot are not going to be Poor people. They're not the fucking broke boys. Okay? Also, last but not least. Last but not least. Broke boys can be fucking dumb bitches too. I don't know why people always act like, oh, well, you don't understand. There's like working class individuals that are just doing this. It's like, okay, it's still dumb. You know, I can still say that. I don't give a fuck. Okay? I'm out of touch rich guy, right? Remember, I'm a fake champagne socialist. Look at me. Shitting on the, the, the every man. The, the layman. The average Joe who's just, uh, you know, taking time off of his trades, off of his, like, plumbing job, uh, and, and put together, like, $10,000 so we could survive in the fucking desert for eight days, you know what I mean? Anyway, hold on, my food is here. Look at that, real wealth right there. The Gucci shirt changed you, man? Yeah. One hundo P, baby. One hundo fucking P. It did. Wow, punching down. Like, there is no protective barrier over this uh, mythological working class individual who went to fucking Burning Man. You know what I mean? You can still do dumb shit. <sighs> Make no mistake. This is equal opportunity shit, okay? You go to Burning Man as a, as a working class individual, I'm still probably going to make fun of you. All right, I'm just letting you know. Valley and Hollywood startups, as well as several venture capital firms. And while dues from most non-tech camps can run about $300 a person, he said that his camp's fees this year were $25,000 a person. A few people, mostly female models flown in from New York, get to go for free. But when all is told, the weekend accommodations will collectively cost the partygoers over $2 million. Good on those women for doing their part to chip away at gender equality, though, I say. And for those with even more money to squander, there are camps that come with, quote, Sherpas, who are essentially paid help. Often there will be up to two to three Sherpas per attendee in these rich camps. Tyler Hansen, who started awesome. going to Burning Man in 1995, decided a couple years ago to try working as a paid Sherpa at one of these luxury camps. He described the experience this way. Lavish RVs are driven in and connected That's together fire. to create a private... That's fire, bro. They got slaves. But listen, you can't call it slaves right you got to call it something cool and different you know forded area ensuring that no outsiders can get in the rich are flown in on private planes then picked up at the burning man airport driven to their camp and served like kings and queens for a week it was started as a utopian alternative to capitalism slash the society we live in but with tech i love this let me tell you something i love this especially with like the mention of sherpas because you want to know you want to know why it's great because this is exactly like climbing Mount Everest. Okay? 
It is by design, rich people shit. It is by design, rich people shit. It fucking ruins the environment. Unnecessary risk for yourself. This is not as bad as like climbing Mount Everest. You're doing it exclusively to be a part of an exclusive club of individuals who have done it. And it's the exact same people that do it. They do it for the experience, right? Because they want to be not just rich in uh, material wealth, but also rich in experiences, right? And they pay their way uh, to uh, engage in these actions. They pay their way uh, uh, all the way to the top, sometimes using, again, ironic, Sherpas. Or, well, you can't climb Mount Everest without Sherpas, actually. That's why you don't hear about the fucking working class man other than the actual Sherpas that are fucking climbing alongside the rich people going up to Mount Everest and getting owned. And just like the climb to Mount Everest, they leave a fuck ton of trash behind. Sometimes their bodies, apparently. Moguls inserting themselves into the festival, attendees have noticed that it's merely begun to mirror society. There is something so like spot on though about like you create this sort of alternative escape from capitalist hierarchy and socioeconomic inequality and like it just recreates itself immediately. Like I feel like if honestly in America I feel like if there were a bunch of people trapped in an elevator for a day and a half like they would sort themselves by class before that day and a half was over. Like you just cannot escape that hierarchy. But it's in this so one good. you have to watch take. that inequality unfold while you're surrounded by white women in box braids. Insult to injury, I say. From an article published in 2015, Black Rock City has had its own FAA licensed airport since 2000, and it's been getting much busier. These days you can even get from San Carlos in Silicon Valley to the festival for $1,500. In 2012, Mark Zuckerberg flew into Burning Man on a private helicopter, staying for just one day to eat and serve artisanal grilled cheese sandwiches. In 2017, a group of burners from Google found themselves preparing for the gathering and were looking to have a luxurious meal at the start of Burning Man. But rather than going for something land-based, the group instead turned to main company Lobster 207 to rush deliver a 10-pound box of live lobsters to Google offices at Sunnyvale. As a Salon article put it, in a just democratic society, everyone has equal voice. At Burning Man, everyone is invited to participate, but the people who have the most money decide what kind of society Burning Man will be. They commission artists of their own choice to build to their own whims, and they also determine how generous they're feeling and whether to withhold money. One great analysis from Jacobin Magazine on Burning Man described it as being a bit of a libertarian wet dream. To these young tech workers, mostly white, mostly men, who flock to the festival, Burning Man reinforces and fosters the idea that they can remake the world without anyone else's input. It's a rabid libertarian fantasy. Oh, yeah. It fluffs their egos and tells them that they have the power and right to make society for all of us, to determine how things should be. This is the dark heart of Burning Man, the reason that high-powered capitalists and especially capitalist libertarians love Burning Man so much. This is why it was like wild to me when I saw so many people in the chat uncritically defending this. This is a great video, by the way. Because it's pretty much spot fucking on with what I described it to you as, or, or as I was trying to summarize, amidst a sea of naysayers telling me it's not right. It heralds their ideal world, one where vague notions of participation replace real democracy, and the only form of taxation is self-imposed charity. And none of this even addresses the huge ecological impact of Black Rock City, which was perhaps best summed up by this photo that went viral of the seemingly endless line of cars waiting to leave the desert. That line of cars, fun fact, was 12 hours long. And that's not even to mention all of the private jets and helicopters that swarm into the area each year to drop off the more elite attendees. So I was about to say, those are the broke boys that go to Burning Man, not the helicopter guys. The amount of water, resources, transportation, fuel that goes into building this pop-up city in the middle of the desert almost by itself cancels out the notion that this is some sort of utopia that exists outside of the parameters of an exploitative and extractive society. As that article puts it, it's just a bit of a libertarian fantasy. Oftentimes in America, we can feel this desire to escape what we know on every level is kind of an unjust and unnatural societal structure. And it can be tempting to come up with alternatives that feel like they're answering the problem. 
but from the cost of attending to the environmental output to the social hierarchy filled with elite tech bros, we're just sort of making a microcosm of the same problems. And honestly, even that's all fine with me. Again, like EDM bros from Jersey have to go somewhere too, and they love going to a festival and taking drugs and dancing to music and buying food at stands that charge like $20 for a taco. But at least in that endeavor, there's not a pretense of remaking the world or fundamentally shifting our paradigms of value or community. They're just trying to do some drugs and vibe. And yeah, that's the, that's the real working man's burning man, okay?